Are you struggling to purchase a home in today's brutal bidding wars? Always coming up a day late and a dollar short? If so, then this is the perfect video for you. Hi, I'm Kevin Groland. I'm a real estate agent with Compass located in Potomac, Maryland. And thanks once again for visiting the latest video in a series, Real Kevin. If you've been out there looking for a home, for any time at all, you realize today's market is severely lopsided. In 30 years, I've never seen it so one-sided in favor of the seller. Depending on where you're looking in MoCo and the price range, you may find that there's five to maybe as many as 30 buyers for every home. If you wanna win in today's market, then you just have to stay to the end of this video to listen to all 12 steps to winning a bidding war in 2022. First of all, let's sum things up. First place in a bidding war gets the house. All other contestants are guaranteed a date with their realtor next week. So let's dive into the 12 steps. Step one, choose your realtor. In today's competitive market, it's imperative that you are working with a top realtor, preferably top realtor team who can not only work fast and efficient, but knows how to win in competitive situations. A top agent in today's market not only is gonna be savvy about the marketplace and know how to close a transaction, but they're also gonna be well-networked within the realtor community. When it comes to working with your realtor, it's not only what they know, but it's also who they know. Let's face it, relationships and networking matters. You must work with an agent who is familiar with all the sales documents, prepares and organizes a neat and tidy package with all I's dotted and T's crossed. Your agent must communicate effectively with the seller's agent. This communication should not only be by phone, text and email, but also video. Most home buyers will never know what actually goes on behind the seller's curtain once their offer's been released. I think if most home buyers really knew what happens behind the scenes, they'd be surprised. It's not always the highest offer that wins. Many times when the competition is close and fierce, it all comes down to the seller and seller's agent, confidence in the buyer's agent to produce a smooth transaction. Two great agents, one for the buyer, one for the seller, can be like two great dance partners working together. Number two, choose your mortgage loan officer. Assuming that your purchase is not a cash purchase, your next step should be to choose your mortgage lender before you just apply at your local bank, credit union, or online mortgage lender. It's important to know, just like your realtor, that your mortgage lender really matters. What I mean by this is beyond just hiring a competent mortgage lender with competitive rates, it's important that your mortgage lender is available and willing to work with you beyond banker's hours. It's important that you know that 90% of the real estate transactions get done on evenings and weekends. If your mortgage lender is not available to talk, discuss, strategize, and advocate for you during those times, you're gonna lose a home. It's also important when choosing a mortgage lender to know how quickly can they close on your loan. The mortgage lenders that we use can all close loans within about three weeks. If the mortgage lender that you're talking to says that you need any more than 30 days to close on a loan, once again, you're gonna lose a house. Number three, mortgage pre-approval. Piggybacking on choosing the right mortgage lender, you will need to have at the time of your contract a mortgage pre-approval letter that's customized to your offer. Basically what I mean is the mortgage pre-approval letter should not only have the date that you're making the offer, but should have the address of the property that you're offering on. The amount that you're pre-approved for should be at least the amount that you're offering on the home, but possibly even higher than that to show the seller in the event that the price starts to escalate that you can actually afford more. Just because you can afford more doesn't mean that you're gonna pay more, but it does give you that flexibility in the event that the price does escalate. I also think it's critical that your mortgage pre-approval letter must have the cell phone number of your mortgage lender as well as the email address. Number four, learn what's important to the seller. One of the first things that you should be looking for is what is the seller's optimal time for closing and move out? It goes without saying that if the property's vacant, the seller's optimal time frame was yesterday. 
yesterday All my troubles seem so far away If the sellers still live in the property, do they require a rent back? For additional information about rent backs, you can check this video right here. It's also important to know what other factors or hot buttons the seller might be looking for so that we can provide them an offer that fits just like a glove. I'm gonna make them an offer he can't refuse. Number five, financial information sheet. I'm just gonna say it right here and now, be prepared to share some of your financial information with the seller. Beyond just your mortgage pre-approval letter, many sellers and seller's agents will require a financial information sheet filled out and signed by you. So you ask, why the financial information sheet? The reason is the mortgage pre-approval letter just basically shows that you're qualified for the mortgage, that your debt to income ratio is within the acceptable range. But the mortgage pre-approval letter doesn't touch upon where the cash is coming for the down payment and buyer's closing costs. The financial information sheet will show whether or not the cash necessary to close the transaction is liquid and in the buyer's account, or if gift funds are required from a relative or somewhere overseas. Can you see why that might concern a home seller? Basically, the financial information sheet allows the seller's agent and the seller to take a look underneath the hood of the car to check the inner workings, to make sure that all, once again, I's are dotted and T's are crossed. Don't worry, you won't need to provide your social security number, credit card information, loan account information, or anything like that. Number six, contingencies. Guys, we're all adults, so let's just keep it real. In today's real estate market, as the buyer, the chances are great, you're gonna get zero contingencies. Normal contingencies that we see in a normal market like home inspection contingencies, radon contingencies, financing contingencies, and appraisal contingencies in today's market more likely will be a complete no-go. The reason is simple. This is not a normal market. And I can also guarantee you this. In today's market, there's absolutely zero chance that you're gonna have of negotiating a home sale or home settlement contingency. So if you need to sell your existing home, better get it done first. Seven, pre-inspection. As mentioned, the chances are great you're not gonna get a home inspection contingency in today's market. But that doesn't mean that you can't get a home inspection. Most of my clients who are being successful in today's market are doing pre-inspections. The pre-inspection is performed before you write the offer. If everything turns out great on the pre-inspection, then most likely you're gonna to wanna to move forward with the offer. If the pre-inspection results come back horrible, the chances are great you're gonna run for the hills. The beauty of the pre-inspection is it gives you the ability to enter into the contract with eyes wide open. Oh yeah, and without a contingency, which will be the dagger of death. Number eight, as is. In order to be competitive in today's market, you may want to consider writing in an as-is clause into the contract. The as-is language will give the seller and seller's agent the confidence that you're not going to simply try to find ticky-tacky items at the last minute to hold up a possible settlement. Number nine, large earnest deposit. Earnest deposit is the amount of money you write at the time of the contract. This amount will be placed in escrow at the time of contract ratification all the way up until the date of closing. The amount of the earnest deposit is just as negotiable as the price or any other terms in the contract. However, the larger amount that you can write, the more confidence the seller and seller's agent's gonna have with you that you're the real deal. It's important to know that the earnest deposit is money that you're putting at risk in the event that you default on the contract. So let's just make sure that you're only writing contracts on homes that you really wanna live in. My suggestions on the amount of earnest deposit, this is the amount that's really gonna wow a home seller, is somewhere between 5% to maybe even as much as 15% of the sales price. The fact is, the more money you put up front, the less money you're gonna need at the closing table. I will definitely tell you that a larger earnest deposit will stand out from the competition. Number 10, non-refundable earnest deposit. Consider writing into the contract that the earnest deposit is completely non-refundable if you as the purchaser do not go to closing 
for any reason that's not a fault of the seller. I'm gonna be really honest, guys, this verbiage is really aggressive, but definitely will stand out to the seller and seller's agent in competition. Basically, what we're saying is that if you don't go to closing for any reason, that's not a fault of the seller, that you're going to lose your deposit. No questions asked, goes right to the seller. Just one word of warning about the non-refundable earnest deposit, this should never be used if you have any concern whatsoever about your ability to obtain financing. Number 11, escalation clause. In today's market, the dreaded escalation clause always seems to be a part of every winning offer. The escalation clause allows you as the buyer to automatically raise your offer in the event of competition. The escalation clause allows you to automatically raise your offer by a predetermined amount to beat the highest net offer up to a maximum sales price of fill in the blank. I definitely want you guys to finish watching this video, but for additional information about escalation clauses, you can also check out this video right here. And finally, number 12, transfer taxes and recordation fees. In the state of Maryland, it's customary that the cost of transfer taxes and recordation fees are shared 50-50 between the buyer and the seller. The key word that I just said though is customary. It's simply not required that the transfer taxes and recording fees be shared between buyer and seller. The buyer could pay them all or the seller could pay them all. To gain an edge in competition, you may want to consider, as the buyer, paying all the transfer taxes and recordation fees. To get an idea or feel for what the cost of the transfer taxes and recordation fees are, you should really talk to your mortgage lender. But let's just start with, in the state of Maryland, the cost of the state transfer tax is 0.5%. The amount of the county transfer taxes and recordation fees will vary from county to county in Maryland. Once again, this is more of a conversation for your mortgage lender so that you make sure to properly budget the amount of cash you're going to need in advance. So there you have it. 12 items that you need to consider. Heck, you probably need to do them all to win in today's bidding wars. Do you have any suggestions? If so, please feel free to place a comment below. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up, comment, or share this video. And as always, you can feel free to text message me directly about any questions you have with real estate or Montgomery County at 240-793-7495. If you'd like a free relocation guide to Montgomery County, then you just click the link in the description box below. Thanks once again for visiting the latest video in a series, Real Kevin. See you next week.